Life Audio. Welcome to the Crosswalk Devotional. We're glad to have you listening with us. Today's topic is about what you can gain in your struggles. We'll return with the devotional after a brief message from our sponsors. Becoming Strong in Our Struggles, written and read by Cindy McMenamin. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil, Ephesians 6, verses 10 and 11. Are you struggling through some wounds right now? What if you were to think about it as a season of strengthening rather than a season of struggles? I was thinking the other day about how easily we can be wounded. Hurtful comments from others, disappointment in relationships, or a circumstance that seems unfair can make us cower in feelings of weakness and failure. In addition to these common everyday wounds, there are serious wounds that may impact us as well. Deep hurts from our childhood, abuse in any form, abandonment or betrayal from someone we trusted, the sudden or premature loss of a loved one, chronic pain, rejection, and more. But those wounds don't have to define us or dictate our character or our future. The scriptures say our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms, Ephesians six twelve. That passage tells me two things. One, Satan and the powers of darkness seek to wound and debilitate us. And two, we are empowered to be warriors, not weaklings who remain wounded. Scripture exhorts us in Ephesians six ten and 11 to be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power and to put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Then, as we're given details in how to put on those pieces of armor, we're told to take the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, verse 16. I started thinking about how many of us fall prey to the flaming arrows or fiery darts of the enemy, Satan, because we believe his lies like, no one will ever really love you, so just face it, or you're a pathetic example of a parent. Or, your spouse doesn't really love you. They're just going through the motions. How about you call yourself a child of God? Just look at the way you behave. You should be ashamed of all that's in your past. Everyone knows what a fake and phony you are. Just give it up. You can never live a life of meaning and purpose. So don't even try. Those fiery darts pierce our hearts. They stab our minds. They condition our thinking. They convince us that God's words are lies and that Satan's words, which are sometimes our own thoughts or words spoken to us through other people, are true. But Scripture tells us to put on the armor of God as a defense against these lies, accusations, and fiery darts. Intersecting Faith and Life For years, I wondered what the analogy meant and how to actually suit up in the armor of God. Then my husband, a pastor, explained it in a Bible study one evening. He pointed out that every piece of armor symbolizes Christ in some way, and therefore putting on the armor of God is synonymous with clothing yourself in the character of Jesus Christ or simply abiding in Him. We are to fasten the belt of truth around our waist, which means to know at the core of our being that Jesus is the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, John fourteen six. We are to wear the breastplate of righteousness, meaning we are to cover our hearts with Christ, who is called the Lord our righteousness, in Jeremiah 23, 6. We are to take up the shield of faith in order to extinguish those fiery darts from the enemy. Psalm eighty four eleven tells us, the Lord is a sun and shield, and Christ is the object of our faith. 
we are to put on the helmet of salvation by guarding our heads and minds with Christ, because Acts 4.12 says salvation is found in no one else. We are to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and John 1.14 tells us Jesus is the Word made flesh. When the enemy starts shooting his fiery darts at your heart and mind, reminding you of wounds from your past or arranging circumstances to make you feel you are defeated, don't shrink from the attack. Don't become a wounded one who falls prey to his lies, accusations, and schemes. Instead, be a warrior. Know the truth of who you are and the power of Christ in you. Stand firm, clothed, and abiding in the character and identity of Jesus Christ. Suit up, my friend. Wield your sword like a warrior and tell the enemy to bring it on. You have all you need to be victorious in him. Lord Jesus, thank you that you have already declared my victory when I fight in your strength alone. Help me to clothe myself in your character so I have all I need to overcome the enemy's assault. For further reading, see Galatians 5, 22 and 23. For more on becoming a warrior woman rather than a wounded one, see Cindy's book, When a Woman Overcomes Life's Hurts. The Crosswalk Devotional is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com.